Hello, I'm Liana Pistel, Social Media Community Manager for the World Bank. This week we've opened up the World Bank Spring Meetings with social media and your questions. I'm here with your questions for Mike Elliott, CEO and President of the One Campaign. One is a grassroots campaign with three million followers working to solve poverty around the world. Mike, thanks so much for joining us today. Great to be here, Leon. Our first question, Mike, comes from India. It's estimated that by 2050, the world will need to produce 70% more food. In your opinion, what can we do to make sure there's enough affordable food for everyone in the future? It's a fantastic, uh, it's a fantastic question and it goes absolutely to one of our key campaigns at one at the moment. We just launched last week actually uh, an international campaign called Thrive, mm -hmm. which is trying to get people to concentrate for three or four years on the importance of really, really significant investments in agriculture, particularly in 30 countries around the world who have terrific agricultural plans, country owned. We can take 50 million people out of poverty, we can reduce malnutrition for 15 million kids, and we can help feed the world. And that's what we have to do if we really get a new framework for thinking about global agriculture and invest in food, agriculture, and nutrition. We're moving towards a nine billion person world. We are not going to feed ourselves in the rich world or in the poor world unless we make sure we have really substantial investment in agriculture over the next five to ten years. That's great. Our next question comes from Afghanistan. One has three million followers. So what's the success to your organization and how did you get such a large and loyal following? <sighs> I don't know what the success of our organization is other than hard work, uh, commitment, passion uh, on the part of, uh, of our staff uh, around the world, in the US, in Europe and in Africa, uh, who really, really care about the importance of being a leading advocacy, policy-based advocacy organization. And I think a constant engagement with our members. We're thinking all the time how we can upgrade that engagement, how we can connect with them more, how we can listen to them uh, more wholeheartedly, uh, how we can uh, listen to what their concerns are about what issues they want us to take on. So you just kind of have to, you can't take your pedal, you, you can't, you, you, you've got to keep going on stuff like this. And you have to, you have to be able to marry passion and commitment for the cause, which is fighting extreme poverty and preventable disease around the world, you have to marry that with the kind of grunt work every day of making sure that engagement with one's members uh, continues as best as it possibly can. Well, I've seen that you're doing a good job on social media. What's your strategy there? Uh, I think our strategy on social media can, be, can really be summed up in one sentence, which is never be satisfied never be satisfied because the, 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 the speed of change in the social media landscape is just kind of so um, uh, fast these days that if you kind of get yourself to a position where you think that you've sorted out uh, how you're doing a social media connection with, uh, with, uh, with your members, some new technology or some new platform will come along that people are kind of really, really keen on. And you've got to be ready for that. You've got to be ready to do video. You've got to be ready to do Twitter. You've got to be ready to kind of have a different hashtag every day, you know. And for those who are watching this, you know, you can follow me, MJE51. Uh, you have to kind of get used not just to kind of reading about development, but also Liverpool Football Club and haikus. But other than that, All right. follow along. So someone from South Africa asks, sometimes NGOs are criticized for victimizing the people right. they help, particularly in Africa. How would you respond to such criticism? You know, I think I think there may well have been occasions in the past where um, such criticism has been made. Uh, I think at one, uh, we we try as hard as we possibly can to listen to our African members and to listen to our African supporters. Our international patron is Archbishop Tutu. Uh, we have uh, Ngozi. Uh, <coughs> and Conjuruela, uh, who's on our board, and Mo Ibrahim and others. We, we speak, in, so far as we speak, for anyone, for our three million members. Uh, we don't kind of try and speak for a whole continent, but we do try and listen uh, as hard as we possibly can to what the real needs of Africa are. And I think one of the really exciting things about our work is that there are increasingly technologies and tools that enable us to connect with people in the poorer part of the world and to hear what their real concerns are and to internalize them into our work. 
Well, we have one last question. Sure. In your opinion, to what extent can foreign aid help alleviate poverty? This question is from Uganda. Well, I think the, 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 if you look at the record, there is no question that foreign aid is a multiplier and a fuel, has been a multiplier and a fuel uh, for making it possible for countries to get to the cusp of real progress. And so many countries in the poor world are now just kind of right at takeoff point. Uh, effective, uh, efficient, and accountable, accountable uh, foreign assistance, in other words, uh, stuff that goes on really, really effective programs, and we've learned a lot more in the last 10 years about what, what's effective, a money that is, that is truly accountable money. So it's money that, uh, where there are accountability mechanisms that reveal both to the, to the uh, nations giving uh, the money uh, to, uh, to those who are receiving it, uh, accountability mechanisms that reveal what's happening to the money in both places are absolutely vital. And that's something that our organization uh, has always stood for, for accountability and transparency uh, being an absolutely key part of the, of, of the Overseas Development Assistance uh, universe. Thank you. Well, Mike, thanks so much for joining us today. And thank you all for joining us at World Bank Live.